Hey everyone, it's Owen. Welcome back to the seventh episode of my Java series. And this episode, we're going to be going over some of the methods of the math class and how to use them. So I have a couple here that I'm going to go through, and these are probably the main ones, all the ones that you're going to be needing, unless you need to be doing some advanced calculations. But I will show you some more at the end. So the first one I want to talk about is the absolute value of. So the way to do a math <coughs> to use the math method is very simple. All you have to do is make like a double d and then do math dot absolute value and then you have your parameters. So the one for absolute value is ABS. This is the abbreviation for it. Now I'm going to be going through a couple so I'm not going to be printing them out but I will um, comment what they're going to well actually I'm not going to comment because some of them are so I'm going to comment what it is that they're going to print out and yeah <sighs> so I'm going to comment what some of them are going to print out as opposed to actually having them print out so the absolute value of well I'll put negative whoops I'll put negative nine um, and for those of you that don't know um, what the absolute value is it's um, kind of a, a brief definition. It's like the positive value of whatever your number is. So, for example, if I had negative 9 in here, what that's going to give me is just a positive 9. And so I'll put that in the comment right here. Hopefully, you guys can see this, but this is what it's going to be printing out, and that is a 9. So, next, we'll just move on through the list here. Um, we'll do double P, and that's going to be try to name these appropriately, that is going to be power. Um, and by the way, I'm going to say right now, um, none of these, there's only one that's capitalized um, uh, of the list that I'm going through, which I'll point out at the end. So for power, power is simple too, you're just going to, this one's going to have two parameters, so we'll just do, to make it simple, one to the power of 100, whatever you have. So those of you that noticed that's just going to be one. So your first value is going to be your base value and the next value is going to be the exponent. So um, if you don't know, power means to the power of it is um, a way to use exponents and if you don't know what exponents are, I don't know how to help you. Um, exponent is, it's just, it's um kind of like a multiplier. I, I don't exactly know how to ex explain this. I'm not a mathematician, but it's like if I had 1 to the power of 100, that means I'm going to multiply um, actually here. I'll make this 1 to the power of 2 or 3. That way I can actually show you it'll be 1 times 1 times 1. And I mean, hopefully you can find out what that is. You should probably, anyone that's watching this, to be honest, you should probably know these math terms. So I'll talk about them briefly still, but, you know, look into them if you have no clue what they are or whatever. So, after this, we have square root, and that is just S-Q-R-T. And, uh, geez, how, how will I explain this? Um, so if I had square root, uh, square root of 100, this one only has one parameter again, um, that's going to give me 10. So, sorry, 10. 10. There we go. So what a square root is, is it's um, whatever it's whatever the value is multiplied by itself that's going to give you this number, if that makes sense. So for example, 10 times 10. Um, this hap I, you know, I'm using perfect squares to make this easy. And that's all the time I'm going to be spending on, you know, definitions. Sorry, but um, it's probably best to know these things. So int ceiling is the next one I'm going, or int c is the next thing, and that is going to be ceiling. And ceiling uh, is very simple. It's simply going to round whatever number you have up. Actually, it's not going to round it. I mean, it is, but it's simply going to bring it up. So even if I had 1.1, it is still going to be 2. It's going to bring it up to the top. To, it's going to bring it up to the place, to the um, nearest whole number 
that is upward that is higher you guys I mean hopefully you can get that sorry about my definitions they're not the best but hopefully they make sense you can you should be able to see what I'm doing so um, double F as you could probably guess is floor so again even if I had 1.9 um, it's going to print out you guessed it 1 <laughs> so again that one's just gonna round down to the nearest whole value and next we have double minimum and sorry I gotta declare that double minimum and that is going to be math dot min I'm getting ahead of myself um, and in here you're gonna have another it's gonna be another one with two parameters and what it's gonna be say if I had 900 and then 100 it's just gonna print whichever one it's gonna print the um, <coughs> sorry it's gonna print the lower the minimum value of these two uh, objects and I'll get back to that so obviously this one's going to be 100 um, it's going to you know be the lower value of those two so after that ooh, I used M already I'll make this one max it'll be math.max and that is going to be doing the same thing if I were to use 900 and 100 again this one is going to print 900 so so those our min and max and after that we have random and what random is going to do random does not actually have any parameters and there you don't need to worry I'll show you other methods of using randoms if you want to use different values but I'll get into that in a later video um, it's actually going to have its own video but what random is going to do it's going to print any number somewhere between 0 and 1 um, so like all the time pretty much it's gonna be you know 9 eight, and it's actually a huge number like it, it goes to like I don't know the exact number but it goes to like 6 or 7 decimal points you know it's a wide range of numbers in this one but you know it, there's ways to I'll, I'll show you ways to um, make to get higher values than just one to zero even with this math class later after I go through all these ones because it'll have to do with all these and you may already see where I'm going with this but if not I will talk you through it so but just give me a minute to finish these up so next one's gonna be round and this one as you can guess simply rounds it so if I were to have 1.6 it's gonna round it down or 1.5 even, I mean up, sorry. Um, if I were to put 1.3, it's going to round it down. And so, you know, 1. That's simple. So the last one I'm going to talk about is math.pi. Now, like I said earlier, there is one that is all capitalized, and that is pi. And um, for those of you that don't know, this one also has no parameters, by the way. Pi is the long you know non-repeating never-ending number so you know 3.141592 that's like all I know so really these are all you need to know for most applications I guess if you actually want to bring out the number but you know you can print that out it'll print out a nice long number for you so those are the main methods that I want to talk about and what um, what I'm gonna do up here just to show you guys uh, an easier way to do this is I'm going to combine two of these. So what you can do with math.round or math.random if you wanted to uh, well here uh, if you wanted like a higher number you could do math.round first off you could just do math.round but that's only going to give you either 0 or 1 so that's not the best way to do it but what you can do is math.round and then do say you wanted somewhere um, between 0 and 10. You can do 10 times math.random and that's going to multiply this to um, you know it's going to move the place value over 1 so you could have if you had you know um, 2.543 it's going to give you well, oh sorry if you had 0.2543 it's going to give you 2 it's going to move that decimal over 1 point and it's going to give you 2.543 so 
what this is going to do, you know, it's going to multiply, if you had that number, it would multiply it by 10, and then it's going to round it off to the nearest number, to the nearest whole number. So that'll give you anywhere, that's going to give you a number between 1, or sorry, between 0 and 10. So that's an easy way to do that. You can do that for 100, but you know, if you want to go to um, simple numbers, that's just an easy way to do it. And um, so you don't have to worry about any, uh, you know, number any compilation errors, but there are, you can combine um, a lot of these if you want, just simply keep putting them inside the parameters, but be wary that can get um, complicated if you have a lot in there. But, um, I'm sorry, uh, I need to address a mistake that I made, and it is not math.py with parameters. Math.py has no parameters, and as you can see, now it will compile, um, so I apologize for that. Um, but just uh, take a note on that. But these are all the main ones that, all the main methods of the math class that I'm going to talk about. Um, however, I will show some advanced ones right here. Um, these are some advanced methods. I'm not going to go through these. But you know, there's, uh, you know, if you know what they mean, I'll, I'll leave. You know, as you can see, they have short explanations as to what each one does, and if for some reason you ever need that, here they are. You can also uh, go to the Java reference on their website and everything. You know, just Google Java references or whatever, and you'll find the whole documentation. Um, go to the math class down the left side, I believe, on the bar. Or you can, you know, search for math or whatever. But there's a lot, um, a lot of methods that you can use, and that falls for all other classes you can check at that documentation site. So, um, with that, I want to wrap up this math video. So thank you for watching and come back for more.